Queen Elizabeth appoints the new Prime Minister as Prince Harry and Meghan Markle attend the One Young World 2022 Summit. Very nice to be back in the UK. And it is very nice to be back with all of you at One Young World. The Crown cast William, Mariah doubles down on her diva comments, and Nelson Mandela's grandson fires back at Meghan. This is so cringeworthy, and I don't know, I I just feel bad in every direction. <laughs> um, but Meghan, that's such an outlandish claim for her to make, and the only South African cast member is like, I didn't say that, so somewhere she, you know, recollections may vary. Plus, relationship expert Dr. Elizabeth Frederick tells us how a family strain may take its toll on Harry and Meghan's relationship. Removing themselves from that big picture, regardless if it's their family or not, mm -hmm. if that is ultimately what's best for their mental health, if that's what helps to decrease you know, any symptoms of anxiety, depression, and helps them feel safe, then at the end of the day, that's the choice that gets made. We've got that plus so much more on today's Royally Us. Hello to our fellow royal lovers and welcome to Royally Us. I'm Christina, that's Christine, and a big week in royal news. Summer break is over. We're back in the swing of things and it's about to get real busy. I know this. It felt kind of good this week that we started to see though. It's not like random stories and random drama. This is a little bit more purposeful now. <laughs> a little bit more purposeful drama, but we got a lot to get to. Um, and kicking off with what you guys had to say about last week's show, um, Kat says it's a 1200 year old monarchy and you just can't come in and then change it right away. Imagine if someone married into your family with barely knowing her, then she started changing things within the family traditions and customs without trying to fit in the family first. Obviously talking about Megan and um, how she wanted to kind of change up the monarchy when she um, entered into the royal family. And I think that's actually a really, really good point. Um, somebody trying to come in and kind of ruffle feathers when it's been this way for so long. Yes, certain things need to change, but I, I can imagine that um, the, she definitely ruffled some feathers when she first came in. It definitely. And I think it kind of comes to, you know, Megan has said recently, she feels like the problem was that she was too American. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you think about America's whole history is less than 300 years old. And the monarchy alone in the UK is 1200 years old. You know, there's a different sense of time and change and, and things like that. And I think that Megan sort of lost that because she didn't grow up in the UK. And I think it was part of her, you know, struggle. Definitely. And then um, Calico kind of piggybacks off that saying she threw a fit because they wanted more power. So they left. That's the revealing truth. A lot of um, th this. This is one of the more tame comments. So it was a lot of <laughs> um, it was hard for me to kind of go through. But it definitely seems like a lot of people just agreed that, you know, Megan kind of didn't get her way. And that's why she wanted to jump ship. Obviously, there's a lot of different reasons with uh, protection, privacy, mental health. And I'm sure a lot of that kind of had to factor into the decision as to why they left. Yeah, definitely. I think people get really, this is such a hot topic. And yeah. honestly, the more Megan talks about her experience, the more people are going to kind of complain about it. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. And, well, let's continue talking about Megan because uh, she and Harry um, went to the UK and she made her first speech since uh, walking away from the Royal family more than two years ago. She delivered the keynote speech at the one young world summit in Manchester, where she used her moment to spotlight and tell people you are the future, but you're also the present. She began her speech saying like we saw up top, it's very nice to be back in the UK. She became involved in this organization back in 2014. So here is a quick, uh, sneak peek at some, uh, what she had to say. Take a look. You are the ones driving the positive and necessary change needed across the globe now in this very moment. And for that, I'm so grateful to be in your company today. So yes, yeah, she delivered this keynote speech saying that she was very excited to be back in the UK, that these uh, people are the future. And obviously she touched a little bit on her own experiences, but um, yeah, interesting that they are back in the UK. No real plans to see the Royal family though. Yeah, no, there's that absolutely. Of. Yeah, there's all, I think we might hear after the fact that if they've met with anybody, like we did the last time they visited the UK, you know, sort of privately, um, we might hear about it afterwards, but the Queen's up at Balmoral. I mean, I think Charles is still, you know, he's not in Windsor and I don't think there's any intention for the Cambridges to see them, but they do have, um, a busy weekend on Tuesday. They're in Dusseldorf, um, launching the one year ahead of the Invictus Inga Invictus games for next year. 
And then on Wednesday, they are um, back in the UK for the Well Child Awards. So it is interesting. I even saw today when they were in Dusseldorf, they did a walkabout, which is a very royal thing to do. You know, you don't usually see that. And in one of the clips I saw, Megan said that she wasn't allowed to give out autographs. And so there was this weird blurred line. If they were just normal people they you know you see celebrities doing autographs all the time but they're you know i feel like they haven't found their footing in being non-royals but also being non-celebrities it's very it's a very interesting i mean they really have nobody to kind of base it nobody's really done this like them before nobody's tried to be celebrities and royals and yes they're like trying to find their footing but it just seems like they just keep making mistake after stake and misstep after misstep and it's just not really hitting and it's not really connecting with a lot of people Right. I think we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but I do think that they need to start taking advice from somebody because they're yes. clearly not. It doesn't seem like they're being coached or guided or, you know, steered in any direction. They're trying to forge this on their own. And I don't know that it's going well. Yeah, it's not. But like you said, we're going to talk a little bit <laughs> no, more not. about it a little bit later. Um, but let's talk about Queen Elizabeth because she appointed uh, the new prime minister, Liz Truss, in Scotland. Now, this is the first time that a prime minister has been appointed in Scotland. She traveled to Balmora Castle, um, and this is the 15th prime minister the queen has welcomed into the role. Imagine that, 15 prime ministers. I cannot believe it. I mean, her first prime minister was Winston Churchill, okay. and then all the way through the years, and now we're 15 prime ministers later. It was so good to see her. She did look, she looked a bit frail, but again, like she's 96, um, but her sitting room just looked so cozy. It looked like a very granny sitting room and you right. just kind of wanted to sit <laughs> and have a chat with her. Definitely. But I think everyone was really, really happy to see her. 100%. And, you know, she has been dealing with these mobility issues, which also uh, sidelined her from this much loved late summer outing in Scotland. She usually makes an outing to see Bramer's Highland Games, um, a short, which is a short drive from Balmoral Castle, um, which always occurs on the first Saturday in September. Instead, Prince Charles and Princess Anne filled in for her. And like they said, that this deci decision was made with her comfort in mind because it would mean a lot of sitting in full view of the public. And um, it's likely that would be a big concern if she's feeling any discomfort. I'm sure she doesn't want to be going through that when all eyes are on her. Yeah, it's difficult when for her, it, it's not like she can just sit there and, you know, it's not like a low key thing. And you have to figure Scotland's cold. It rains a lot. It's windy. This is a very outdoor event and it is it's a long day. So, again, at her age, I don't know that we can blame her, although, you know, we do miss these these occasions. Definitely. All right. Well, this is interesting. So the BBC had made a big payout of one point six million dollars following the indictment of the network and journalist Martin Bashir. They made um, these donations to a lot of Princess Diana's beloved charities between Centerpoint, English National Ballet, Great Armand Street Hospital Children's Charity, um, numerous charities spreading this $1.6 million. And the BBC said the BBC had indicated its intention to donate the, to charity the sales proceeds derived from the 1995 Panorama interview with Diana, Princess of Wales. The BBC has now done so. Given the findings of Lord Dyson, we think this is the right and appropriate course of action. Finally doing something right in this. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting. We talked about it recently when we were talking about, you know, the new documentaries that were coming out mm -hmm. and how hard it is to wrap your head around the fact that this aired on the BBC, which yeah. even today is sort of known as extremely reputable, extremely unbiased, sort of unimpeachable. And for this documentary to have aired when it is in fact just a horrible manipulative thing to have done to any woman much less mm -hmm. diana the you know, princess of wales i think they're feeling really bad yeah. <laughs> and they're sort of trying to like clean up that mess from you know two decades ago right and you're right you, you they're trying to save face a little bit because like you said this is a reputable organization people look to them for the, the facts and the truth and they weren't delivering it exactly. and they did yeah. it in a shady shoddy way so they're trying to make up for it. So uh, I guess, the, I guess, you know, $1.6 million is nice to kind of spread out through the charities that really meant a lot for her. 
Well, uh, let's move on. Let's spill some royalty because I am so excited for the next season of The Crown. They found their Kate Middleton. They found their Prince William. And that was fast because we just talked about this a couple of weeks ago that they were still looking. So um, The Crown revealed the lookalike actors who will play the future Duke and Duchess of Cambridge in season six of The Crown. Newcomer Meg Bellamy will take on the role of Kate. Prince William will be portrayed by multiple actors as, as the character ages. 16-year-old Rufus Campa and 21-year-old Ed McVie will um, both take on the role and this will be their first professional television appearance. No pressure whatsoever. <laughs> um, it was interesting. I think either the producer, the director of the show said in an interview in the last couple of years that The Crown would probably not go very far into the mm -hmm. present because when people will remember it really well, that it starts to get hard to sort of create these dramatizations. So I'm first of all shocked that we're seeing, you know, them in, at such an age, you know, coming to such an age that it's going to go, you know, to so close to recent history mm -hmm. because everyone's like, that looks nothing like them <laughs> because we're so relevant today. Right. Um, I don't think the castings are too bad. I mean, they're better than some of the other ones that we've seen. Yeah, no, I um, think they look pretty good. Yeah, except I do think that that Australian TikTok star, Brittany Dixon, was robbed of the Kate position <laughs> seriously like she is like her doppelganger like it looks exactly alike and like we said before the crown wasn't really looking for anybody that had experience because they would coach them through everything and be there for them so i mean they had the perfect casting but i'm sure this this girl will do a fabulous job as well <laughs> yes i think that um, meg bellamy she does look really well yeah. so you know physically she looks really well suited um she does seem to be an actual actress whereas britney dixon is an artist um so hopefully it comes out well. I'm always hypercritical of the crown because of, you know, what we talk about every week. And I sort of mm. sit there and think that would never happen. Right. Um, so I am, I'm cautiously optimistic. Oh, but I can't wait to only have a few months to go, um, but we'll, we're almost there. I feel like it's been forever. It's been a long time since we had the last time. season. And so. just now shooting. This is torture. <laughs> It, I know, right? Give it to us. Um, well, this was interesting. So Mariah Carey doubled down on calling Meghan Markle a diva. She tweeted, really enjoyed talking to Duchess, Duchess and diva Meghan Markle about the duality of diva. Yes, I call her. I called her a diva in the most fabulous, gorgeous, and empowering meaning of the word. Now, of course, during the podcast of uh, Archetypes, Megan revealed that she was taken aback when Mariah told her, you give us diva moments sometimes, Megan. Um I mean, she she does give us diva moments sometimes. This is well. I I said last week. I love how Mariah Carey really uses this as an empowering word because mm -hmm. so many of us as young girls were called divas, and it was really negative mm -hmm. connotation. And, and now I think it can be really empowering. However, for Megan to be totally unself aware and have that sort of you know being taken aback by that. Um, I found it so, especially since she says, what have you read about me? What have other people yeah. been saying about and me? I jumped to the really, conclusion. yeah, that really jumped out at me is she's really not taking ownership for her own actions, which I think, um, especially as the way that Mariah Carey spoke about being a diva, you could really to, you know, all of us, all of us women have those moments. You know? mm -hmm. Oh, 100%. I just feel like. You know, I understand why Prince Harry has such a hateful relationship with the paparazzi. I totally get it. But it just seems like they are just co so consumed about what everybody is saying about them. Because like you said, she's like, well, what did you say about me? What did you hear? What did, what, 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 like, it just seems like maybe they just so wrapped up in like what everybody else thinks about them rather than what that image they want to put. I don't know. It just seems like we said, it's just a disconnect. The image that they are... Um, putting out to the public just doesn't seem real doesn't seem genuine to me at times yeah, I think, yeah again i think that this is an opportunity where you have to ask who is coaching them or helping them or leading them or you know and i don't think anyone is and i think it's starting to hurt them you know no one's reading through these articles before they go to press Do, is anyone sort of editing these um podcasts before they go to production or is she getting the final say and then we're getting these really awkward moments right very well speaking of awkward moments this is uh beyond um so one of nelson mandela's grandsons slammed megan for comparing her royal wedding 
to his grandfather being freed from prison. Um, his grandson told the Daily Mail um, that Mandela's celebration was based on overcoming 350 years of colonialism with 60 years of a brutal apartheid regime in South Africa. It cannot be equated to as the same. He said he was surprised by Megan's recent comments saying that South Africans dancing in the streets for his grandfather's release in 1990 after 27 years in prison was more important and more serious than her marriage to quote unquote, a white prince. So she said that she was attending the 2019 premiere of The Lion King in London when a South African cast member from the film pulled her aside. She said, he looked at me and he's just like light. He said, I just need you to know when you married into this family, we rejoiced in the streets the same we did when Mandela was freed from prison. So Dr. John Connie, he's the only South African cast member in the film. He denied ever having spoken to Megan, saying that he was baffled and baffled by the comment. Ooh, so awkward. <laughs> this is so cringeworthy. And I don't know, I, I just feel bad in every direction. Um, but Megan, that's such an outlandish claim for her to make. And the only South African cast member is like, I didn't say that. So somewhere she, you know, recollections may vary but right. this is another example you know no one is guiding megan and saying we should fact check this or are you sure you want to say this because there was so much in that cut interview and even some bits in the recent podcast that mm -hmm. are very easily fact checkable i think one of the ones that's really i've seen a lot on twitter is that megan spoke about the british press calling her child the n-word mm -hmm. and there was a lot of fact checking on that and i haven't seen anyone actually pull up written proof of that right. and it's a, just another example where if megan was taking advice from someone who ran her pr campaign or someone who ran her you know her her whatever it is you know people that's why these that's why big celebrities have you know pr um companies and assistants and things like that running their team to make sure that these blunders don't happen because that one is really embarrassing. It's very <laughs> embarrassing. I mean, it even goes back to her CBS interview when she said that they got married before they did. And everyone was like, no. And even, you know, their, their priest came forward saying, no, that wasn't true. So I don't know if she's just like exaggerating the truth a little bit to make it sound more flashy and splashy, but you got to really be careful because there are, people are going to fact check every single thing that you say. And I, uh, you know, to kind of, you know, it pulled. I, I mean, I can't say if maybe she heard this from somebody, somebody else, and maybe um, you know she was just mistaken. But you know, to have people publicly slam you and say that, like that doesn't happen, it doesn't look good, and people are going to stop believing what you're saying because um, because you just keep kind of tripping up over yourself. Exactly. And I think you're right. Now we've seen this a few times where she's done these big interviews or she's done these big outspoken things and made these terrible claims but then when the fact checking starts to come in then you're it's like what do you believe of what she says and now i've seen a lot of commentary in the last week or two since that piece from the cut came out and the podcast launched a lot of people are sort of you know reassessing their view of megan mm -hmm. and that's not what megan this was supposed no. to be a big pr campaign to earn her lots of public favor and give the podcast a boost mm -hmm. and instead it has done the total opposite yeah total opposite oh, we'll have to wait and see all right well now it's time to break down the royal rules and we recently sat down with relationship expert dr elizabeth bedrick who revealed why megan and harry may um have a strain in the relationship since there is a strain in the royal family take a look so i have to ask you as um an expert what do you make of their relationship you know i think it's interesting because it's hard to tell anytime that a couple's in the public eye. It's really hard to tell because there are so many rumors, there's so many stressors that come along with that and create heightened anxiety. And really, I mean, that's the biological response to the rumors and all those stressors. And so I would say that it's probably not really fair, some of the feedback that they get, especially Megan. I think that she's been really painted out to be what, um, our culture, what society has deemed her to be, which is maybe not actually accurate to who she is. And again, it's really hard to tell because of the leveling of anxiety that they're both under. Definitely. I mean, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges that couple, this couple and couples face by having a relationship in the public eye? Yes. Yeah, so I would say first and foremost, the rumors. That is really hard because 
as humans, we are designed for acceptance. We fear rejection. And so when these rumors get in the way of us feeling accepted by our partner, that can be really overwhelming, but then really amplify that. I mean, it's the whole world that they're really risking rejection with. And so because of that, that is going to activate the amygdala, the emotional center of the brain that is going to increase anxiety, which ultimately increases irritability. Mm -hmm. And then that, that makes the relational dynamic that much more difficult if they're both essentially operating in anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so I think the rumors is a huge part. I think that the way that it impacts them biologically, neurologically, in the sense of increasing those symptoms of anxiety makes it really hard to function day to day. And then also the lack of privacy. Like I can't even imagine what that would be like, not even, not even being able to leave their house without somebody having something to say. Yeah. So I certainly would imagine that all of those would be tremendous stressors. Oh, definitely. Do you feel like this either brings a couple closer together or pulls a couple farther apart? Because I know Harry has spoken out about battling mental health issues. He, you know, about, and talked about the paparazzi and how that has affected his life, especially with the death of his mother. So do you feel like this either brings a couple together or pulls them apart? Absolutely, based on the way they react to that. And so really the foundation, the emotional intimacy, which is the safety and trust that is established between a couple. And if that is strong and they there is this sense of, I want to protect you, I want to keep you safe, in spite of all of these stressors that we face, then I absolutely do think it can pull them closer together. But if they're each not prepared for that, and maybe if they're both struggling with their own mental health issues, they're both struggling with maybe feeling more on the defense or guarded versus coming together as an alliance, then that's really where we see couples in general start to pull apart because now they're viewing it as me versus you instead of us versus them. Do you feel like they are protecting one another? I mean, obviously we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. We only have these glimpses of interviews that they've done. They did that big sit down interview with CBS. I mean, do you feel like they are a united front as a couple? I feel like some of these big decisions that have been made would indicate that they are, right? So when they chose to move to California, when they chose to step back from some of those royal responsibilities, I do believe that was an attempt to really help Megan to feel safe and to feel like, hey, I'm on your team, I choose you, which is a really powerful gesture, right, for a partner to make. Um, but then it's hard to tell the United Front because then Megan gets so much backlash and she gets so much pushback from everyone, you know, that she's running the show and everything is all about her, which I think is really unfair because like you said, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. But I would say some of these big gestures that have been made demonstrate that they are trying to be a United Front in this. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you have the layer of the public opinion and but you also have the family dynamic, too. And they have distanced themselves from his family. They step down as senior members of the royal family. Does that put a strain on your relationship when there is a um, a strife within the family? And you have to wonder, right, because you have to wonder what type of resentments might be going on for Harry in the midst of that. And where did this decision come from? Did he feel like it was an ultimatum given by Megan? Did he feel like it was the best option in order to keep his wife safe? And we don't know. We don't know his intentions. We don't know the reasons for that. Mm -hmm. But I would absolutely say that that separation in the family unit does it causes a risk. There is potential for resentments, which could certainly create cracks in the barrier later on in their relationship. And so hopefully the decision was made out of, you know, like I want to show up for you and I want to protect you through this. And if that's the case and he made it through his own volition, then no, not necessarily. It doesn't have to mean a crack in, in their foundation. Right. Is it, I mean, it's, a, we don't know, like, the, like I said, what it goes on behind those closed doors and, you know, it's all speculation, but is it ever healthy to isolate yourself so much from your family? I mean, both sides. I mean, she only has a relationship with her mother. He doesn't seem to have any sort of only really a relationship with his grandmother. So is it really healthy to kind of isolate yourself and, you know, put yourself in this little bubble? Well, and depending on the toxicity going on within their family unit, then absolutely, there could certainly be reasons um, that is actually the healthier choice. We don't know how the family is treating them. You know, there's a lot of those rumors and speculations about the comparisons um, to Kate and William and what is that doing to them. Mm -hmm. And so if they are feeling these pressures or they feel like their boundaries are being consistently violated, then absolutely removing themselves from 
that big picture, regardless if it's their family or not, Mm -hmm. if that is ultimately what's best for their mental health, if that's what helps to decrease, you know, any symptoms of anxiety, depression, and helps them feel safe, then at the end of the day, that's the choice that gets made. And then hopefully they are making their own family somewhere else. They're building their own social connections elsewhere. And then on top of all this, they have two little ones as well. I mean, I can't imagine the stress. (laughs) I can't either. I know. And I really do feel for them because when I think about it with my clients I sit with who are dealing with maybe the family isolation or maybe the two little kids, you know, these isolated events, Mm -hmm. but they're dealing with all of it. So I can't even imagine the toll that would take. Right. And like you said before, even comparisons with his brother and his, and his wife, you know, they are like the poster child of relationships of Royal relationships. Everybody loves William and Kate. And and at one point that was Harry and Meghan. Everybody was obsessed with them and, you know, um, and how far they have fallen in the public public eye. How hard is that to have those comparisons within the family too? Absolutely. And we've seen that really going on for Harry for years and years since he was a teenager, right? Yes. The, his behaviors versus Williams. And so we've seen that going on and it can certainly take a toll on the self-esteem, on their core beliefs. You know, overall, it, it, their functioning in general is going to be impacted by those comparisons. And so I think that potentially as much as they've fallen in the public eye, potentially they are the ones being healthy. Potentially they are the ones setting boundaries and they're protecting themselves and their children. Mm -hmm. And because we don't know all the background information, we only see what we see, but there's a good chance they're actually the ones that are showing up for their own mental health. All right. Well, yes, it's, uh, you know, having family issues definitely doesn't do, um, do wonders for a relationship. (laughs) Not for anyone. And then when you're under that massive microscope of being a member of the British Royal family, in in a way it must be, really hard definitely hard all right well it has been quite i feel like this is the first time that we haven't really mentioned kate and william at the top of the show we haven't talked about them at all (laughs) they have been enjoying their summer break but they did take some time to write a forward for an upcoming children's book titled puzzles for spies written by officials from the government communications headquarters they wrote we are delighted that the brilliant minds at gchq have been busy working on a third puzzle book and that this edition is designed for younger readers Hopefully this might mean we find them easier to solve. Um, As a family, we are no strangers to the vital work of GCHQ. We have seen firsthand how staff constantly adapt to face new threats. And we remain inspired by how committed staff are to protecting our national security. So it was nice that they took some time out to uh, write this forward for this uh, puzzle book. Yeah, this is really cute. It sounds like it's something that um, William and Kate do with their older children. Mm -hmm. Um, They have been involved with these sort of puzzles for spies you know Kate's grandmother actually worked um as a code or you know in the code breaking um during World War II so it is interesting to see like Kate's family history is sort of woven into something that she now does as part of William's family so that's Very really cool. cool well I know that the kids are starting school soon so I'm hoping that maybe we'll get some new first day of school photos I don't know about that but they're starting a new school so I'm sure they're very excited I know there's nothing cuter than those first day of school photos that start popping up this time of year (laughs) definitely well that is it for this week's episode of Royally Ask Christine thank you so much as always this was a fun one it feels good to be back in the swing of things definitely definitely well everybody keep commenting keep subscribing and we'll see you guys next week Bye. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.